celebrate Jesus. We celebrate his death, his resurrection, his birth, his life, his teaching. We enjoy the freedom that, that Christ has purchased for us, don't we? You like that? I like that. I'm thankful for that freedom. But you know, I, I'm not I'm not sure that we always get what the complete ramification, what the complete potential is in the life of that one man, Jesus. I'm not sure we've caught how earth-shattering, how absolutely personally transformative, how, how full of change his death on the cross and his resurrection were in the world. After he, after he had sacrificed his life on the cross, on the despised cross and conquered death and hell and the grave and rose again victorious over all, over sin, over all kings, over all kingdoms. He actually commissioned his disciples and he did it based on his ultimate authority. Amen? Let's talk a minute here. Um, you know, we, we, we need to understand the complete victory that Christ took. Have you thought about that? The complete and total victory at the cross. interesting thing. That, that cross was the last thing that Satan wanted to see happen. He tried to have Christ killed prior to the cross. Do you remember? One day he was, he was walking through a crowd or, or, or uh, he, had, he had somehow, you know, made somebody angry again probably a religious leader because he had this way of dealing with religious leaders. He had some really nice names for them like um, he called them whitewashed sepulchers. That's interesting. One time he told them you're full of dead man's bones. That's nice. Another time he told them he said you know what you guys make your disciples twice as fit for hell as you are. They like that one a lot. He, uh, uh, one time he was uh, healing, uh, and, you know, they let the young man down through the roof, and, 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 and the Lord looks at him and says, is it easier for me to say your sins be forgiven or be healed? The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were especially they felt totally enlightened by that comment because you see when he said is it easier for me to say your sins be forgiven or be healed he was claiming to be on par with God in their minds he was committing blasphemy who are you, God, that you can forgive sin? But then there came time for him to sacrifice his life. Satan had tried to offer him ways out. Satan had tried to have him killed. So he made it all the way to the cross. And on that cross, he took every one of my sins. He took my entire sin nature on him and yours. 
and he took it all the way to the point of death. Now Satan thought, maybe I've won. Maybe I've maybe maybe this is the end. Maybe I've got it. And three days later, he was uniquely surprised to find not only was Jesus alive and well and and uh, coming out of a tomb near you, <coughs> but 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 he had taken with him certain objects that Satan needs. The keys of death, the keys of hell, the keys of the great... The, all the power that Satan had, thought he had, gone, gone, gone. We serve a victorious God. When he came, listen, and, and this is important. For years I thought, well, yeah, he rose from the dead, and that's true, and he did. And in a minute, we may shout about that. That's a possibility, but first you have to understand. First you have to understand, he won at the cross. Why do we have to understand that? Because we are a people who live to serve and give as Jesus did. It's okay if it feels like a cross. It's okay if it hurts. Hey, gang, it's okay if it costs us our whole life on earth. Because our whole life on earth is not worth being compared to the glory being prepared for us in heaven. So, with authority, near the very end of his time teaching the disciples, Jesus gathered them to him, and he said, because God has given me all authority in heaven and on earth, go, make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? He handed off the ministry of disciple-making to his disciples. Now, gang, these were a little bit of a rough bunch, all right? Let's think about this for a minute. We're not talking about the well-educated of their time. They were fishermen, right? Or they were tax collectors. That's worse than a fisherman. I mean, we all know that, right? Who would you rather deal with, a fisherman or a tax collector? All right. Okay. And to these men, he entrusted the disciple-making ministry. Wow. Now, if we look at Acts 1.8, He's meeting with them now. This, this is it. He, he's, his feet are getting lighter. He, he, is, he, is, he is getting ready to go home. Right? And he says, and, 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 well, actually, right before this, he asks them, he says, go and wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. And when he receive, and, and when when the Father gives you His promise, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jericho. I'm sorry, Jerusalem, Jericho, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Wow, what a promise! And they and they go, and and, and now what you got is you got, I don't know, 120 gathered in the upper room 
and, and, and think about it. What, 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 what's happened lately? You think they've gone through a little bit of trauma? Yeah. They watched their master be crucified on a cross. Three days, they didn't know what was going on. Suddenly, he resurrects. And then, and then 40, 50 days later, he's out of there. They're looking at each other like, what do we do? What do we do? Well, he said to wait. Okay, let's wait. I, I believe they waited about 10 days. That's about how long I think they were there. When the, when the Holy Spirit came, it says it came like a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. All of a sudden, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest over each one of, of them. You know, can you imagine that happening right now, right here? Wouldn't that be cool? And then they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right? Wow. What an amazing moment. And those 120 gathered in the upper room had no idea what the Holy Spirit had planned for them. They were just obeying Jesus' words. They were just being obedient to what they knew to do. Amen? So, when that occurred, Peter, which is interesting that it was Peter, you got to remember, Peter wasn't exactly the best example of a solid citizen prior to that, right? One moment, he's, he's, he's you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, you know, and wow, Peter, you know, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, you know, it was a real aha moment, it was a wow moment. Next thing you know, Jesus is telling them, hey, I have to go to Jerusalem, I have to suffer and die. And Peter's like, Oh, no, Lord, let it never be. And, and Jesus is like, hey, get, get behind me, Satan. I can't listen to that. And then finally, we find, we, we find Peter warming his hands in a fire after Jesus has been arrested. And, and a little servant girl comes up. Hey, mister, weren't you one of those, his, his followers? Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh no! Uh, um, uh, I, I never knew him. No, no, no! I know I've seen you with them. I said, I don't, I don't even know the man. No, hey, Mister, I, I'm sure that you're one of his. I said I never knew the man. Something you do a good cockadoodle do for me. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, see, we all know the story, but let's think about it for a minute. Jesus didn't stop at that point. Jesus didn't say, that's it, Peter, that's enough. You're out of here. Did he? No. No. Uh -uh. After the resurrection, we find Jesus making, I don't know, probably a lake trout breakfast for, for Peter. Nothing like some good lake trout early in the morning. Especially if Jesus is the one making it for you. And he says, hey, you're going to feed my sheep? Do you love me? You're going to feed my sheep? Do you love me? Peter, feed my sheep! Pentecost hits. Peter stands up and delivers the sermon's sermon. Period. Listen to the end of that sermon. Uh, we're at, at uh, Acts 2, 26-29. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Messiah. Think about that. That's either, that's either a fantastic altar call or a great way to get killed. Right? So listen. Here's what happened.
happen. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, What shall we do? Next slide. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now here's the bad news for us. Actually, it's really good news, but you might think it's bad news for a minute. He says the promise is for you and for your children and for all those who are afar off. What promise? The promise of the Holy Spirit's power. The promise that you'll be given power to testify. The promise that we carry on this day the ministry of Jesus the ministry of the apostles, the ministry of discipleship. It's in our hands. It's in our hands. Do something or do nothing, it's in our hands. I'm not trying to guilt anybody. I'm just speaking the truth. It's in our hands. We have to pick up the shovel, as Dave said. You know, many of us stop at that point. We think, well, really, Jesus will call someone more qualified than I am. not true. It's not true. It's just not true. He's called us. Um, How seriously do you take the ministry of discipleship? I don't know. I'm just asking. Some of you, I'm sure, take it very seriously. And you're actively working. And that's good. Look, here's the thing. We want to make sure that as a body of Christ, we equip you to do that work. Okay? That's what the Wednesday nights from February 12th on until, I don't know, Jesus comes, whatever, are going to be all about. Look, Jesus is not looking for perfect servants. Any, let's see, anyone here perfect? Any, any perfection? Okay, we don't have to worry about that. But, but, um, he's looking for men and women that are willing, 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 willing. You know, it's interesting. Uh, during worship, uh, right before Vida got up and gave her word, which, by the way, was a fantastic word, the Holy Spirit said to me, Hang on a sec. You, you wait till you hear this. The Holy Spirit said to me, he said, I'm wanting to work in families from grandparents to parents to children. That's a great place for discipleship to start, brothers and sisters. That's a great place for discipleship to start. But the Lord had a dream. And it's a dream that that needs to infect us if we're going to change our world. Let's go to John 17, but let's go 
20 through 22. John 17, 20 through 22. Sorry, thank you. I'm going to skip it. Yeah. Nope. John 17, 20 through 22. It's the second one in the John series. It'll come up here in a minute. That's fine. There you go. Yep, perfect. So, uh, so Jesus says, my prayer, now this is interesting to me. This is very interesting to me. What's interesting to me is you rarely get to see inside Jesus' prayer closet. Right? We, we don't, we, not, not much. You have a few of his prayers. Usually when he was going to pray, what would he do? He, yeah, he'd get off to the secret place someplace and pray. Great, great model. Great model, people. Go do your prayer work so that when you approach the world, you're prayed up. Go do your prayer work so that when you're dealing with what you have to deal with, you're ready. You're ready to speak the word of faith. You're ready to move into the situation. You're ready to deliver what needs to be delivered. All right? So we're in Jesus' prayer closet. He says, my, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the whole world may believe that you sent me. Um, we live in a society that is horribly fractured. Careful, Steve. You're <laughs> Steve, you're teetering on the edge. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind. Um, the, the body of Christ, if it is to obey Jesus, must display a unity that goes beyond all the walls. No, I mean it. I mean it. I mean, I don't care. Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, Open Bible, who are they? Who knows? Anyway, Assembly of God, Foursquare, I don't care. I don't care. If, if you bear the name Jesus and you're ready to serve him, you are my brother and sister, period. Hey, world doesn't believe it. World doesn't believe it. They see all the fractures and all the, the division and all the strife between brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what they see. But through the Holy Spirit, we can learn to be one in him. Amen? All right. Amen. Um, I know some of you that were at the, at the 9 o'clock service go, where's all that energy you had at 9 o'clock service? I don't know. I'm a little quieter today. I feel like I'm too far away from you guys. But it's safer there because when I when I speak, I spray. So it's, it's safer where you are now. Much safer. I can't help it. God made me this way. Talk to him about it if it bothers you. So, people, all of this requires one thing. It requires faith. It requires belief. It requires taking Jesus at his work. It requires accepting the role of the Holy Spirit in your life. It requires 
that you allow him to move through you. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 11, the first one. Thanks. Now faith is the confidence which we hope for and the assurance about what we do not yet see. Praise Jesus. I can't wait. How about you? I can't wait till my brothers and sisters all across the spectrum. I don't, I don't care. Black, brown, yellow, blue, green. That's the Martians, green. That's the Martians, yeah. I don't care. Left, right, I don't care. I'm going to be dead level. I don't give a, I don't care what your political stand. I don't care. I, I serve a different kingdom. I, I serve a, I, listen, I serve a kingdom that can heal the schisms. That can heal the divisions. I, I, I serve a kingdom that goes way beyond race. Because it, it, it encompasses every race, every ethnicity, every social group. The kingdom that I serve, the kingdom I serve, there is no male nor female. There is no slave or free. There is no rich or poor. We are one. Jesus said, let them be one. I, 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 listen, I don't ask you to agree. You don't have to agree with everything your brother says. When Dave and I get together for breakfast, sometimes we agree and other times he's wrong. Thank you. I was, I, I have a dream. I have a dream. I know, I know. We, we've dis, you've displayed that many times right here. You know, you know, I have a friend, Dave Martin is his name, uh, and, and he and I uh, agree even less than Dave and I do. And, and the interesting thing is, you know, I can't wait till someday he's with me up here. And he goes, well, I believe in Calvinism. And I'll say, well, I don't believe in all of Calvinism. I think you got a few things wrong there. And I'll say, well, I, and he'll say, well, I don't. And I'll go, well, I do. And, and he'll say, well, I certainly don't believe in Pentecostal uh, uh, you know, theology. And I'll say, well, I do. And then he'll say, well, I don't think you guys are, you know, culturally tuned in enough. And I'll say, well, you're right. I have to agree with you on that. And I'll say, but I don't agree with you on most stuff. And he'll say, well, yeah, well, neither do I. And then I'll say, but I, I, I would go to the wall for you. I, 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 would, I would help you in any situation you're in, Dave, because you're my brother in Christ. Because Jesus has put a love between us. Because I know that I can minister with you and we can make a difference in the world. I hope that this morning he is knocking on some hearts to say, I can go further, I can trust more. Some of you are making a decision. I'll be there February 12th to get the tea king. Listen, if you can't make it on Wednesday night, just come see me back at the table. We will find a way to instruct you. Listen to me. We have got to do what Jesus told us to do. And for me, that means helping all of you become better and better and better at leading new Christians into maturity and leading non-Christians into Christ. And then when I'm done with that, I'll, 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 I'll help you lead new Christians into maturity and non-Christians into Christ. And then after that, well, you know, new Christians into maturity and non-Christians into Christ. And then at some point, my voice will go away and I'll lay down 
and I'll go to my reward and somebody else will be up here doing the same thing. Listen, brothers and sisters, we serve a Lord that wants to see the city of Portland as a united body. We don't have to agree with everything with our brothers and sisters, but we have to agree on this. Jesus is the Christ. And his goodness chases us down. And we will learn to live and to work side by side to see his kingdom come in Portland, Oregon. Amen?